Um, so this is me. Um, I've done a few other workshops for the Circle community. I'm Tatiana. I'm a community business strategist. I run a course in the community called Build a Community Business. Um, and I'm also a Circle expert. Um, and I always like to say the reason I do what I do is because I believe that community businesses have the opportunity to really fix a lot of shitty problems that we have in the world right now. Um, and they can only do that if the community business leaders are well supported and they're getting paid well and they're not burnt out. Um, so that's what my job is, supporting you all on not getting burnt out and um, getting paid. Um, so that's me. Um, before we go into pricing, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about community businesses in 2022. Like, where are we in this evolution of this kind of business model, this kind of business? Um, I believe we're still at the very beginning of what's happening here. Um, we are coming out of, hopefully coming out of a, a pandemic now where online business in general was accelerated in the way that it's done online. So there's a lot of new platforms. There's a lot of excitement around online businesses. Um, but I believe that in terms of community and uh, people paying for connection online, um, we're still at the beginning of people being used to um, paying for online community, uh, paying for participating in a group where they're being connected with other people like them. Um, so I think that is both, um, you know, we have our work cut out for us because it's still not something that everyone is familiar with, but it's also like a really big opportunity for us as the community of community people um, to come together and kind of define what that future can look like and define like what it means to be a, a community business. We're still very much in the beginning of what this can be. Um, and I believe that pricing is a big part of like really um, claiming connection and community as something that's valuable and something that people should be paying for. Um, so before um, before we start with um, the strategy stuff and the heavier stuff that we're going to talk about, well, this part is heavy too, because um, we're going to talk about um, mindset and we're going to talk about um, money. So I wanted to start, and I talked to Matilda about this, I wanted to talk about like kind of what, what holds us back from charging what, um, what, what our worth is. For, for our communities and for our businesses. Um, so I'm gonna, I hope that you have like something to take notes on because we're gonna take a couple minutes to answer a reflection question. Um, so I'll just put it on the screen, just think about it for a little bit and I'll share my story. And if you'd like, you can share yours in the chat also. Um, so this is a, a question from Jerry Colonna from a book that I really like called Brief Boot. Um, how did my relationship to money first get formed and how does it influence the way I work as an adult? What was the belief system around money and work that I grew up with? Um, so just take a couple minutes and then I'll tell you what my answer is.
Okay. Um, I invite you to go back to this question later on. This is something, this is a question, one of the questions from that book that I go back to pretty often and think about how, uh, specifically like how it's having an effect in my life. Um, so I'll tell you what my answer for this one was. Um, so I grew up in a family of entrepreneurs and the, the positive side of that when it came to money is that um, the people in my family always felt like they could make their own reality. They always felt like um, if something was broken, it was up to them to fix it. So there was a, like a lot of initiative in the way that they thought about money. If you didn't have money, then like, let's figure out a way to get money. Let's figure out a way to, to, to make money. The dark side of that is that um, I think I was taught that your, your worth, like your personal worth was tied to how well your business was doing or whether you had money or not. Um, so that's like a, a, a belief that I've had and a belief that I think about when um, subconsciously think about when I'm thinking about how much to charge and when to raise prices and, and things like that. Um, so I'm gonna go through um, a few of the, the beliefs, the, the themes that I've seen um, that come up when people answer this question and you, you tell me which of these resonate with you and your experiences and how you grew up. Um, so these are the things that hold us back. Number one that a lot of us have is scarcity. Um, so whether you grew up with a lot or a little, you always feel like there's a limited amount to, to go around. And you always feel like if I don't take what I can get, then I'm never going to get anything. Um, so scarcity is one of those beliefs. Um, people pleasing, the idea that um, in order for me to um, get what I, what I need, I need to um, go against my values to make sure that everyone likes me and to make sure that I'm pleasing everyone. So um, you can see how that would show up in your pricing um, and everywhere in your business really. Yeah, and uh, Rhea is saying that for me, it was scarcity 24 seven. Yeah, that's a really um, common one. Um, another one that's kind of the other side of the spectrum is like a riskier environment. So um, let's put it all out there, let's risk everything and the reward will come later. Kind of like a toxic positivity outlook. Um, and then the last one is like hustling for your worth, which was the one that I most connected with, which was like, if you, if what you're doing is not successful, then you're not worth anything. Like that affects your worth. Um, it, it was like actually a big realization for me to separate those two things. Like, even if I don't have any economic value to the world, I'm still inherently valuable and that's an idea that is revolutionary in a lot of ways. And that's an idea that I think is important for us to bring to our communities as well. Um, let me read some of the comments. Uh, Jay was recommending the psychology of money as a book to understand why we're all different toward money. Um, when you grow up broke with family from third world, Dominican Republic, expectations are low as far as how much money one can make hustling every day. Yeah. I relate to that a lot. I grew up in Brazil. Um, Paul said, I was brought up to believe that money does not buy happiness and is just there to, to help. Yeah, that's a unique one, but that's, that's an interesting one also. Um, so I think it's important for us to keep these in mind as we're thinking about pricing. Um, in the next se section, we're gonna talk about pricing. Actually, um, Mathilde, this is a good time for, for the poll. Um, oh, it came up for me, cool. Yeah. Um, so you should see a poll on your screen. Um, how much are you right now charging for your community? And this is for me to get an idea and for everyone to kind of get an idea uh, where we are. If you have something that is not necessarily like a membership community, just pick the one that is like closest to, um, to, to what it is.
we, almost with all answers. Once we have most of them, we can publish the results. Tatiana, is that what you wanted? Yeah, that'd be great. Um, and you might, I, I feel like I've been on other calls where people didn't see the poll and it's like a Zoom thing. Um, so if you don't see the poll, um, you can, if you're comfortable, you can put in the chat how much you, you charge for, for your community. Um, oh, okay, <laughs> I saw it. Uh, and Barbara said, my community members are part of the paid program, though I want to launch another paid community. Cool, sounds like we have most of the answers. So I'm gonna, gonna end the poll and publish the results. Ethan said, I have a paid option, but no one has bitten yet. I'm currently working on relaunching the community and better defining my tiers and the value within each one. Cool. Joy said, wanting to charge $9.97 per year or potentially more for a VIP membership. Cool. Cool. So a lot of people haven't launched or not sure yet. That's great. We're going to radicalize you earlier on with this workshop. <laughs> um, less than 20 dollars a month that's 21 percent um and then a good chunk of 21 to 100 dollars a month and then a few that are more than 300 and nobody at a thousand a month um, and then there's more detail in the chat I have a per month for overall community and a program cost the ted speaker tier is a flat fee for the program yeah we're going to talk a little bit about the different structures now and how to think about you know when your community has multiple uh, tracks and things going on. Um, so again, um, oops. Um, I mentioned in the beginning that I was nervous because these are all my hot takes on pricing. Um, with everything that I share ever, I always want to say, um, you know, do whatever you want. Like take what is helpful to you, take what resonates with you, take what you feel like would work for your members and completely ignore everything else. Um, in the numbers that I'm gonna share, don't feel like you're behind, don't feel like you're not uh, doing things right, you're exactly where you're supposed to be. Um, we're gonna share kind of like a, a, a vision for where we can all head as community business leaders but it doesn't mean that you have to be there right now. Um, so don't worry uh, about anything that we're sharing. I'm also gonna share some tips on kind of next steps if you're just starting from scratch or if you wanna, um, if you wanna just um, only raise the price a little bit, um, you don't have to like completely change your business from night to, from night to day. Um, okay, so we have a lot to cover, so let's move a little faster. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share, there are four types of community businesses and spoiler alert, these are, these are what they are. Uh, one is membership communities. Another one is evergreen course with office hours. Number three is a cohort based course. And number four is group coaching. Um, and what we're going to do now is basically go through each of these. I'm going to show you examples of some that are like pure of each of these types and how much they charge. And then I'm gonna tell you the range for each of these for the, for the target price that we're hopefully moving towards charging. Um, a lot of the prices that I'm gonna share are like very North America based. So they're much, they're based on like a US salary. Um, if you're in a part of the world that has different earning power and your members are also in that part of the world, um, that's something that you're gonna consider in your pricing. Um, but the main point of this whole thing is charge more. So if you take anything away, that's what it is. What oh, was there a question, Matilda? Sorry. No, it was just me uh, playing around with my keyboard or doing weird things, sorry. <laughs> cool. Um, so first we're gonna talk about membership communities. This is like what most of us think about when we think of a community. Um, my definition is memberships are ongoing community experiences for people who have something in common and benefit from connecting and supporting each other. They often include perks, events, educational content like workshops with guests. Um, there is something that I talk about and I talked about in the last video that I did with Circle, which is like the connection to learning ratio. 
basically when people join a community, there are two things that they're doing in the community um, because communities are all about growth and people grow through both connection and learning. And these different types of community businesses have different ratios of connection to learning. Um, so you remember in the last video, if you watched it uh, with the contest, I talked about specifically the circle spaces and separating the learning and connection spaces into library spaces and cafe spaces. This is also true across your community in the events that you host, in the emails you send and everything else. Um, so this is the, the ratio that I'm talking about here. And membership communities have the highest connection um, percentage in this ratio. So it's 80-20 uh, connection to learning, true membership communities. So um, that means that most of what's happening in a membership community is members connecting with each other. It doesn't mean that's all that's happening. There's also a lot of learning. There's always, um, there, there could be um, guest speakers, there could be content that's involved, but the main point of it is the connection piece. Um, and then an example of this um, in real life. Um, so I always like to connect community, online community stuff back to the real world because I believe that what we're doing is like really connecting people for real. It just happens to be on the internet. Um, so I always like to think of examples that happen in real life and were already happening for dozens of years before uh, the internet came out. Um, so I think a good example for this is chambers of commerce. So um, a lot of cities and towns, at least in the US, have um, a chamber of commerce. And this is uh, an organization that brings together the different businesses in that town and they share resources. They, it's an opportunity for them to partner and connect with each other. Um, so I think that this is a good kind of in real life pro proxy for what we're doing online in membership communities. Oh, I don't know what happened to this slide, but um, <laughs> hopefully the next one is better. Oh no, um, this was, um, this listed um, everything that's included in this community, the upside, which is what I'm using as an example for an online membership community. Um, they are a community for very high-end consultants. And what happens, most of what happens in the community is that uh, people are connecting with each other. They're bringing each other onto different projects that they've gotten. Um, they're asking for advice on negotiating with clients and things like that. Um, they do have expert sessions and there's a little bit of content involved with it. Um, and there are also uh, office hours that are hosted, but the main thing is the members connecting with each other. Um, and this is, oops, they charge 189 a month and they charge this quarterly. Um, and they have, I think close to 200 members at this point. Um, Oh, thank you. Matilde put the link in the chat. Thank you. Um, all the communities that I'm sharing here are communities that I'm either familiar with because I've worked with them. They've been my client and I'm allowed to share about them or I'm in them. And this one, it happens to be both. Like they were both my client and I'm also in the, the community as a, as a member. Um, so yeah, so 189 a month, that's how much they charge. So I think the target price range for this category of community business um, that we're all building. Again, US-based, um, whatever the equivalent would be in your own uh, country, I, I would make that conversion. But what I think that our target should be for these kinds of communities is $40 to $250 a month. Um, I think that if you charge any less than this, then you need to grow your community a lot in order for you to make enough money and in order for you to be able to run the, the community efficiently as a leader. And I think that we shouldn't bank on communities becoming larger and larger. We should make it a good experience for less members. Um, and that comes with charging more upfront. Um, so just to do like just some quick math on what that means. So if you're charging 40 to 250 a month with a hundred members, that means that Per year, very roughly, you're making forty-eight thousand dollars. 
to 300,000 a year. Yeah, and exactly, people pay attention to what they pay for. Um, I think that, we'll talk more about this, but I think there are a lot of communities that start out uh, cheaper because the idea is that later they'll charge more. I have very rarely seen that transition being made in reality. Um, if you start at a very low price range, you're attracting different members than the members you actually want if your plan is to eventually charge more. So you might as well just charge more. You might as well just figure out a, um, a community offer that is gonna be okay to charge more, even if you don't have a ton of members, even if you're just getting started. So the second one is evergreen course and office hours. Um, so the definition of this one is a course with recorded lessons where students can set their own pace and then they have a community platform and or events where they can get their questions answered and meet others. Um, sometimes this is called a hybrid model of online courses. Um, I think that uh, in the online course world, this is done um, without a lot of investment in the community many times. And I think there's a big opportunity to um, have a thoughtful community around like an evergreen course as a way for you to be able to charge more for the course itself. Oh my God, all the images are here. Um, but yeah, but it's it's a way for you to be able, it's kind of like best of both worlds in some ways because you don't have to do like a cohort where you're teaching live. Um, you All your recorded lessons are there, um, but you, they still get some interaction with you as the, as the teacher. The connection to learning ratio for this one is uh, much more on the learning side. So it's 30, 70. Um, so people come for the course um, and then the community is just uh, more of like an added bonus of what they get. Um, but there's an opportunity for you to shift that, that, that ratio a little bit with if you're really thoughtful with designing what the community is. Um, and unfortunately all the images, oh no, it showed up. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> um, so the, the real life example of this is Khan Academy. So even though Khan Academy is online, um, what they've done is they make their, they've shifted the way that um, education works in that they made it so that the kids would learn using the videos. And then um, when they came to the, to the classroom, they were practicing with, with the teacher and the teacher was answering questions. Um, I mean, a lot of people say that this was like a big shift in education and it's a way to better be able to better serve the, the students because the, the teachers are there answering questions and helping them overcome problems instead of um, the teacher kind of saying the same thing every year and then they go home and try to solve the problems at home for, for homework. Um, so this uh, evergreen course in office hours is kind of similar to that model. Um, and then a circle example, is Notion Mastery. Again, sorry about this image. It should have an image of their, um, of their circle. Um, and Notion Mastery is Marie Poulin's course about Notion. And it's exactly this. It's an evergreen course that's actually delivered on Notion. So you're learning Notion as it goes through the course. Um, and then there are not only office hours, but lots of other events that Marie and her team posts um, so that you're, when you get stuck, you always have some, a place to go to ask. And um, it's like, there's always programming happening in, in the community and you always have a, a place to go when you, when you get stuck. So especially for courses that are a little bit more technical, this is a really good option. The image came back. No, it didn't. Um, this might be a really good option. And I think it's one that hasn't been explored enough. Um, so if you have content, this could be a good one for you to explore. Um, Notion Mastery, here we go, it's back. Notion Mastery costs um, $750 a year. Um, you, you pay $750 and you get access to the course for 
12 months. Um, and yeah, so you get access to both the course and all of the different events. And here's the image with all the different events they have. They have office hours, beginner office hours, bonus sessions or workshops. This is when they teach parts, parts of the lessons live, um, hot seats, and then demos also. Um, so it's almost like I was telling Matilda, it's almost like a, um, like when you're programming a TV channel and there's like the, the, the main show that you always, that, that is like the prime time. And then there's like all these other shows that kind of help that show. Anyway, I'll explain more about that, um, that analogy one day from when I used to work on TV channels. Um, so the target price range for this one, I think is 750 to 3000 a year for this hybrid model of courses. Um, I think that so 750 is on the, the lower end and that's where Marie is. Um, she can do that because she has a huge audience. If you're not starting with such a huge audience, I'd consider kind of starting a little bit more expensive if you can. Um, but yeah. So if you're the, the range here, again, if you have 100 members, um, which you have to think about whether that's realistic with your audience, um, then per year, you're talking about 75K to 300K a year um, with 100 members. Jay had a question, Tatiana, that maybe we can yeah. cover in Q&A, depending on uh, the flow of your, of your presentation. When you land on the higher price for your community, Yes, what's the best way to find leads to join your community? And maybe we can discuss that in Q&A, but like your thoughts around if you have a high ticket price, how does that play with, you know, finding members and attracting the right people who are ready to pay? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, we'll talk about that at the end a little bit, but really quick, um, you'll find that just talking about, um, talking about things that are for your members who are a little bit on the, the, the higher end of, of the spectrum will um, attract those numbers. A lot of times they're already listening to what you're saying and they're just waiting for you to talk to them specifically. Um, so it's, it's not as hard as it seems, um, but also what I recommend is starting really small. So I was uh, a coach and a consultant working one-on-one -on -one before I ever launched a course or anything that was for more um, for, for like groups. And I think that if you have something like a course or something that is based on your content or based on like something that you've created, um, delivering that one-on-one -on -one or in very small groups at first, um, will make sure that first of all, you're getting paid from the beginning. So you're not starting from that mindset of scarcity. And I'm like waiting for someone to pay me. You're, uh, you can find a few clients that are kind of keeping you flow as you build out the community and the program that you want to build. So I always recommend finding a way to start in that way. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end also. Um, the third one is cohort-based course. So this is cohort-based courses sometimes are called CBCs. They are intensive, short-term community experiences that bring together like-minded groups to learn a concept, hold each other accountable, and connect. Um, so these are not um, communities that go on forever. They're communities that kind of pop up and end, or um, later kind of sometimes they, they turn into membership communities, but this number three is really about the, the cohort experience. Um, they're usually like four to 12 weeks uh, on, the very, on the longer end. Um, and the connection to learning ratio, 40, 60, in my opinion, again. Um, the in real life example, I don't know what's going on with these images. Um, the in real life example is a university course. So this picture was a picture of literally um, someone at the front of the class teaching at a at a university. Um, I think that cohort-based courses have a lot of parallels to this kind of learning. Um, it's like a group of people coming together, they're meeting each other, they're sharing ideas, um, and then they go on to the next course afterwards. Um, and then the circle example that I had was breakthrough facilitation, which um, 
Gwen just did a show and tell, um, which you can see in the, in the circle community. It is, I think, a four-week cohort um, that Matilda is actually just in, and I'm, I'm joining the next one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Matilda dropped the link. I highly recommend, um, the course, but also watching the show and tell, because it's pretty awesome to see how, you know, how a cohort-based course can be set up on Circle, and they have a pretty awesome um, setup and, and layout, so, yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a course um, to learn facilitation, um, which I think is, uh, really cool and I've, I've collaborated with Gwen in the past and it's great. Um, so she charges, uh, this is so weird with these images, they're very distracting. She charges um, $1,500 per four week cohort uh, for the course. And Mathilde, I don't know what happens with the community after the course. So are you still in the circle community? Everyone just stays in there. You stay in there, right? You, you have access to all the resources, the alumni. You can still, you know, revisit the material and, and so on. Got it. Um, so that's a that's a, a cohort example for you to look at. Um, another example is rite of passage on the very high end of cohort based courses. Um, that is four thousand dollars to seven thousand dollars a cohort. They have a VIP um option for for their cohort um, this is like one of the most successful cbc's they consistently fill their their class i think it's like 150 per cohort they do it a couple times a year um, and these are the right and besides that people all over the internet will talk about rite of passage i bet someone is talking about that in the um in the chat um, there are, there are like rite of passage alums all over the internet talk, talking about how many people they met and how good the connections were from, from their cohort. Um, so it's a really popular one. Um, so I think the target price range for CBCs um, should be from 1500 to 8,000 uh, per cohort, depending on what's included in the cohort, depending on how it's structured, depending on the, the type of course that it is. Um, courses that are much more around hobbies are harder to charge a lot more money for, whereas um, more professional courses um, are easier to, to kind of charge a premium for. Um, so again, with the 100 members, these numbers start going up a, a lot more. Um, it's 150,000 to 800,000 a year, um, assuming you have 100 members. And then the last one is group coaching. And I think this one, okay, I think this one is something that a lot of us are doing without calling it this and without charging as if it is group coaching. Um, so as you kind of see what this is, think about uh, the way to position what you're doing. And if you can kind of position it towards group coaching, because that's something that you can charge a lot more for. Um, so group coaching programs are small group experiences that can include content and structured regular meetings to help members grow and learn from the facilitator and each other. They can be ongoing or time bound. Um, and I think the connection and learning for this one is 50-50. I think it's both. Um, the in real life example is CrossFit. So um, any, any gym, any like group gym program um, this is basically what you're doing. You get a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one support, but within the group. Um, and then the online example, um, this was a coaching program that I was in and she actually was, she actually wasn't on circle, even though I would like her to be on circle. Um, and it's Tanya Geisler. She is a coach that, um, she coaches on the imposter complex and, uh, helping you think bigger and kind of um, heal some of those things that we were just talking about from your, uh, from your childhood, thinking about money um, so that you can kind of, you can go bigger, be more visible, uh, show up more in the world. Um, and she charges $7,000 for a three month program. Um, and yeah, I, 
I don't have as much experience uh, on the client side helping uh, group coaching programs, but I think that there is so much opportunity to add really high touch community to these group coaching programs. Um, so I think that the, the target price range here is between $500 a month to $3,000 a month. And I've seen even higher end than that, but I think um, if you go any higher than that, it starts to be a little bit scammy. Um, and I did this with 25 members um, instead of 100 members. And so if you're charging these kinds of numbers, even with just 25 members, you're looking at 150,000 a year to 900,000 a year. Um, so the numbers kind of go up a lot. Um, this is the chart of everything that um, we just talked about. Again, the, the, the ratio there is connection to learning. And this is the range of the pricing. Um, I'd love for you to put in the chat which numbers you are, and it might be more than one. Like I've talked about them separately so far, but it, it might be that you have a membership community and a cohort-based course or group coaching, like it could be different ones. All the above, one in four. One in four, not too sure right now, but a bit of all, one in four, yeah. One, two, and three, membership community and potentially group coaching. To membership, cohort-based course, yes, it's really group coaching and uh, ongoing evergreen. Oh. Yeah, so I'm gonna talk about what my course is so that you can have an example of what this is and you can know what to do with like knowing which category you fit, we, you fit into. Um, so my community and course um, is really one, two, and three, um, even though it is, I think it is a little bit of group coaching, but um, it's, it's growing a little bit too fast to be too much uh, group coaching. Um, so I think it's gonna be more one, two, and three. Um, at least for the time being. And this is what that means. Um, this is like all the different things that we do and which category that they fall into. So in the membership community category, we host workshops, there are member hosted events, there are accountability groups and conversation spaces. Um, this is for my course called uh, Build a Community Business. Um, and for Evergreen, course and office hours, we do have pre-recorded lessons, uh, worksheets and templates, and we do one to two monthly uh, office hours, and we just started doing hot seats. Um, that falls into the evergreen. And then cohort-based course, we do have a four-week live cohort, um, and it's an interactive experience. It's like there's interactive events and experiences two times a week during the cohorts. Um, and then that is where kind of the small group coaching um, fits into it more. Um, the, the next cohort of the course is coming up. Um, and if you, what is it? If you apply before this Friday, um, it just went up in price, but if you apply before this Friday, you get the, the previous price. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Um, but the thing I wanted to share about the price, so the price of the community and the course is $1,800 a year, or you can choose to pay in 12 installments now for $180 a month. And the thing that's important about this is if I told you I had a membership community and it was $180 a month, that's on the higher end of membership communities. So that sounds expensive. Um, which it is, it is a membership community and it is 180 a month, um, but that's more on the expensive side. Um, if I told you I had an evergreen course with office hours and it was 1800 a year, that's kind of in the middle of the range. That's kind of like in the middle. And if I told you I had a cohort based course and it was 1800, um, then that's actually on the, on the lower end of cohort based courses. So in terms of how, if you are multiple of these, in terms of how you're positioning what you're selling, it's worth it to look at this chart and to think about which one is best to lead with. Because 
membership communities are always going to be thought of, uh, well, not always, hopefully not always, but right now they're thought of something of, as, of, as something that, um, it should be like $10 a month, $20 a month. Um, these higher prices are still harder to, to get from membership communities, but before, once you're established, it's, it's much easier to get referrals and it's much easier to charge um, $200 a month for, for a membership community. But until, you're, until you get there, it might make sense, especially if you have content um, connected to what you're doing, to think about um, reframing it as a, some kind of course that, that you can offer. Um, does that make sense? Does anyone have any thoughts on that? Uh, Diane, Diane is talking about BACB. <laughs> Where did, did you begin? begin? Sorry. Yeah, so I mentioned I started like doing a lot of this work one-on-one -on -one with people until I understood what the commonalities were and what the curriculum for some something like this could be. Then I did a beta, it was about a year ago. Um, I did a beta, it was like $600 and it was really to test the, the content. And it was like 10 people that paid 600. Um, and that was like just cohort based course. I didn't talk about membership community at all because it was only 10 people and it didn't make sense to uh, pitch it as a membership community because it was such a small group. And then after it was after the cohorts that there was that cohort and there was the first official cohort that was last fall. Um, and then it started to like more turn into a membership community and we started to add events in between the cohorts until finally after this cohort that's when we added the evergreen option where you could join at any point and uh, take the course whenever you'd like, and then you would be automatically enrolled into the next cohort. So the next cohort that we're doing is starting in like a couple of weeks. And we already have the people who joined in between the last cohort and this cohort um, to join this cohort, which is nice because we don't have to do like such a big launch. There's not like all this huge pressure to that people can only join in between the two weeks. Um, the people who are joining this cohort are already in the community um, and we'll get a bunch of other people also joining because there's also a push before the cohort for more people to join, um, but no one had to wait to join the, the community. Um, does that make sense? Yes, thank you. So if you are interested in getting some more support and help, um, as I just mentioned, um, the, the next cohort starts on May 24th, and the last day to join is May 20th for the spring cohort. Um, it's a four-week cohort where it's really fun. We do a lot of events, and you kind of like get a crash course on everything that you're going to learn. And then you spend the rest of the year um, in the community implementing uh, what you learn. Um, so if you're interested and you apply before the before uh, the end of this week, then you get the previous price, which was fifteen hundred. So you save three hundred dollars on on the on the price. Um, one of the things that I'm doing every cohort is raising the price starting now, um, and we're gonna we're gonna end up at a much higher price point. Um, you know, part of talking telling other people to raise their prices is that you kind of have to lead and also raise your prices. Um, so that's something that I'm gonna do. Um, and speaking of raising prices, I wanted to like just say four quick, I wanna leave a little bit of time to, for a couple of questions at the end. Um, so I've kind of like speed through this. And if you have any questions, you can DM me on Twitter or Instagram um, or email me. Um, but this is why you should raise your prices. Uh, freemium is really risky for communities. Um, people don't tend to convert from freemium to a premium solution because um, as soon as they join their community, they already feel like they're not being able to take advantage of everything that's there. Um, so it's 
um, it's an assumption that's really risky to invite people to a free community or a very low cost community and expect those people to convert to something that's more expensive. Um, the other thing, Matilda already mentioned this in the chat, um, it increases the member investment. So the more people are paying for your community, the more they're gonna show up. Um, we hear this over and over again, and I've experienced it, and it's definitely true. Um, your, your members are going to have a better experience if they're paying more for your community, which sounds like a scam, but I promise it's not. Um, the third thing is uh, resent when you feel resentment towards your community, whenever you feel resentment, period, it comes from a lack of boundaries. Um, so whenever you feel resentment about something, there's an opportunity to just set a boundary somewhere. Um, and pricing is a boundary. So if you feel resentment toward your community, um, think about pricing as a boundary and think about uh, scaling back what you're, off what you're offering potentially um, to kind of balance that out a little bit better. And then the fourth thing is, um, like I mentioned in the beginning, we're all working on like a pretty new thing. And every time you raise your price, you're saying that bringing people together and connecting them is something that's valuable and is something that people should be paying for. Um, and I think that is worth it. Um, one quick note about inclusive pricing, um, because I know you're probably all thinking not all my members can afford something so expensive. And that's definitely true. Again, people live in different parts of the world. People have different uh, disadvantages. Um, we are all dealing with uh, white supremacist uh, capitalism and um, just a, a world that is not fair to, to everyone. Um, so these are three, I also wrote a piece about this, but these are three ways to kind of offset that um, depending on what you wanna do and depending on what kind of members you wanna welcome into your community. Uh, Carrie Melissa Jones does this really well. She, it's a really good example of um, she uses both scholarships and parity pricing uh, for her course that I think starts tomorrow, uh, the new cohort of her accelerator. Um, so that's a good example to look at. Um, and then finally, just some ways to get started. Um, get very clear on your member growth journey. So what is it that your members come to you for? Um, like, what are they looking for? Where do they want to end up? And what is the in-between there? Like, what can, how can you help them on that journey? Um, again, what I already mentioned, starting really high touch with less members um, so that you can charge an appropriate amount so that you're making money from the beginning um, is a good approach. Um, and then raise prices 20% each cohort. If you have cohort, cohorts, you don't have to raise prices for the members that are already in your community, but raise prices for anyone new that's coming in. Um, that's a really good way to kind of to get started. Um, if you want to see more of me and dig into more of the community offers and what it means for these four different types, I'm going to be talking about that tomorrow in this free workshop that I'm doing. I'm also going to talk a lot more about the ACB there. So if you might be interested, that's a good workshop to apply to come to. Um, again, apply for BACD before this Friday if you're interested and you'll get that discount. And DM me on Twitter and Instagram if you have questions. Ooh. Awesome. Let's all unmute ourselves and give Tatiana some claps for the great content she put together. Let's go. Unmute, unmute. Okay. That doesn't always work. Sometimes you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Tatiana, thank you so much. Those were really great strategies and I really love the way your typology of, of communities is really interesting in its own right, I think, of, you know, thinking about the learning to connection ratio uh, and to really understand what people are ready to pay for. We often say people are not necessarily willing to pay for connections, but oftentimes they are, as shown by your example. So we don't have much time for, for questions, but what I suggest we do is let's take maybe one quick question from the chat and then I will save the chat as usual, put it in the replay. And how about we continue the conversation asynchronously? So Tatiana, if you're open to it, you could respond to the questions that were dropped in the chat in the replay once we post it. Um, yeah. And like you mentioned, we can also uh, join your, your follow-up session tomorrow and, uh, and learn more. How does that sound? 
That sounds great. Yeah, I forgot to mention, you can also DM me on Circle if you if you have any questions or any ideas. Awesome, that's right. And I put your, your Circle Expert profile as well before. So, uh, oh, I need to pick a question. Which one would I pick? Let me see. Is there anyone that you saw in the chat, Tatiana, that you wanted to kind of like address as a bit of a closing remarks and discussion? Um, I love that, Jason. I'm sorry, but did you just bash capitalism? His, his handle is at W2Capitalist. <laughs> I did, sorry. <laughs> um, let's see. Well, Matt was asking earlier, actually, just a bit of a clarifying question about your own business model for build a community business. Do you have, do you have three models within the same community and pricing? Yeah. Yes, or, or three, or three different offerings. You have three pricing points. No, it's only, that's a good clarifying question. It's only one price. Um, it's 1800 uh, for everything. Um, and we position it more as a course and community. Um, but yeah, you, you, you get everything that I, all those three uh, columns that I listed, you get everything. And it's only, for, for right now, there's only one tier. It's, that's the only thing that you get. Um, I am working on something a lot more premium, but I'm not sure actually yet how that's going to fit in, but it's going to be different. Mm -hmm. John asked a great question earlier. Could you discuss layering courses on top of membership and the way to upcharge it in a way that is interesting to attract people to it? It's an interesting one, right? It's like, how do you, and I'm going to paste it again in the chat. So it's, it's there for everyone. How does like, because you know, like as you described as com communities that are hybrids, you have courses, you have membership, both at the same time, like strategies or thoughts around upselling, if I understand correctly, John, or maybe you can clarify what your question meant, upselling from one to the other. Is yes, or offering courses on top of membership and attracting members to those courses and or to other events or things that are premium in essence. Because I have a lot yeah. of offerings to my members generally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I there. Well, tomorrow on the workshop tomorrow, we're going to talk um, a little bit more in in detail. What I would say is, I always recommend you having like one core offering, and then you you're trying to get people to that offering, mm -hmm. that to that offer, whatever it is, and the other you kind of figure out whether the other things um, are going deeper on that or if they're leading people to that specific offer. Like where else do they, where do they fit on the, on the spectrum? Um, but if you have everything and they're kind of on the same plane, then it's harder to kind of, uh, for, people, for your members to understand it um, in their mind and then for you to also like strategize on like what comes first, second and third. Um, but if you, um, if you have one and you know like where it fits, I think it's a little bit easier because it can go both ways. Like it, you can go from a course to a membership or from a membership to like also offering courses. Um, you just kind of have to know the one that's your main one. Mm. By the way, everyone, we definitely, it's not the last time that we are doing a workshop on price on pricing or that we have those discussions because this is definitely a huge topic and arguably the most important topic for community builders these day, because like Tatiana, you said, we're just at the beginning of this, this wave of building community businesses. Uh, so you should really expect more, more sessions. We already started, um, some of you were there. Every first Friday of the month, we have a monetization office hours with Shannon from our team, uh, also to understand and navigate circle paywalls and how you can use paywalls to, to, to monetize different parts of your community, you think about upgrading and so on. Tatiana, thank you so much. It was an awesome session as usual. Um, I'm gonna join the session tomorrow. I am definitely interested Yay. in to learn more. Um, and I definitely recommend for anyone interested in community businesses, monetization, but also like the, the mindset uh, of, of building a community business, Tatiana's course is amazing. And I've seen it evolve uh, cohort after cohort and, and, and really improving. And I've heard rating reviews from everyone. so. Highly recommend it. Um, Tatiana, thanks so much. Thanks everyone for joining this workshop. Uh, it's great. It was great to see you all here. It was great to, to see your awesome questions. Like I said, we'll continue the, the conversation uh, in the replay and, and we'll have more, more pricing uh, sessions very soon in the community. Cool. Thanks everyone. Thank thanks. you everyone.
Bye-bye. Have a great rest of your day.